Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis and in today's video we are going to be discussing how to punch in a self-defense situation without breaking your hand. This question actually came to me from one of my students who after watching a UFC in which several of the fighters uh, had their hands shattered upon impact uh, was curious about me making a, a video that will cover some of the basic concepts of how to prepare your hand, how to hold your hand, um, and how to throw your hand in a way that's not going to break your hand when you're actually throwing a punch in real life. One thing to understand that the gloves that you see in a boxing match or an MMA match is not actually there to protect your opponent. Impact is impact. Pounds of pressure per square inch, when it hits the head and the head moves, it causes a concussion, causes brain damage, Punches hurt, even when you have a glove on. But what the glove does, what the hand wraps do, they help to protect the hand of the person throwing the punch. The hand wraps help to prevent the knuckles from being scratched. They help support the wrist. And of course, the gloves do the same thing. But when you're punching bare knuckle, when you actually are fighting without anything on your hands, you don't have these supports. So it's really common for a fighter to throw a punch bare knuckle and break their hand. And so in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the basics on how to avoid that when you're in a self-defense situation. Because what's the point in protecting the $20 in your pocket if you get yourself a several thousand dollar medical bill afterwards? So the first and most important thing to prevent your hands from being broken in a self-defense situation is simply not to use a closed fisted punch. Now. In our Western world, we always see the hero ball up their fist and throw the fist at their opponent. However, there are several ways to strike someone with an open hand that will do as much, if not more, damage. You just need to know how. Of course, if you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you've already known for a long time that the eye jab is the king of all hand strikes. It has more range than the standard punch because you don't have to close your fist, thus flexing muscles, it moves faster than the standard punch. And because you're striking with a part of your anatomy that you are used to pointing at things with, you tend to be more naturally accurate firing your fingers at someone's eye. So obviously the eye jab is gonna be one of the absolute best possible ways to strike. Alternatively, there's also the palm strike where you pull your fingers back and hit with the heel of the palm. We want it to align with these bones here. As I fire the shot, I'm hitting with the palm as opposed to the fist. If you think about it, if you were to fall down right now, if you were to trip, you wouldn't catch yourself on your fist. You catch yourself on your palms. And it's because even from a very early age, you understood that there's more structure in the hand, in the palm of your hand than there are on the knuckles. But if you are insistent on throwing a punch with a closed hand, this is how you're gonna do it. First and foremost is understanding what striking surface you're going to use on your hand. A lot of times beginners will tend to punch with the entire fist, this whole part here. But that actually is, has a lot of flex to it and tends to hit near the tail end side of your fist, kind of the weak side where the pinky is. So we actually don't want to hit with a whole fist like this. We actually only want to hit with the first two knuckles right here. Right on the front. So when I throw the punch, I'm not throwing it like this. I'm actually angling it slightly so that upon impact, only the first two knuckles hit. So you see, it's not the whole fist, just the first two knuckles. The other thing that helps the hand not break is holding your hand properly when you throw it. A lot of people will hold their hands like this. This is kind of the way a boxer holds it. But the problem with this grip is that it doesn't actually lock your fingers. There's a lot of play in the way your fingers move when you hold your fist like this. So why did people learn how to throw punches this way? Quite simply, a boxing glove holds your hand just like this. So if you've studied boxing for years, you might keep your thumb on the outside just naturally, because that's where the boxing gloves put your thumb. But if you are gonna throw a bare knuckle punch, 
you want to lock your thumb over your first two fingers. That way, the part of your hand that you're striking with has as little flex as possible. I don't want it to bend when I hit. The other aspect of the punch that's going to help you prevent from any injury is going to be making sure that your wrist is straight. You should be able to level something with your wrist. And we're measuring from the middle knuckle straight down. And we aren't going to create the angle of the punch by adjusting the wrist. We do it by adjusting the shoulder. And so all of that gets together that you have a nice solid surface to hit with. But that comes to punches just hit really hard. If you're punching with a thousand pounds of pressure per square inch, you're probably going to break your hand, which that comes into the kind of third part of this video, which is going to be, don't hit as hard as you possibly can. Whenever we are kind of practicing punching, we always throw as hard as we possibly can. We put everything we can behind the punch. When we're going on a punching bag or punching in the air. But when you're actually hitting something, when you're actually hitting something hard, we actually want to punch technically. Now that doesn't mean you aren't punching hard and that doesn't mean you're not putting a lot of your body behind your punch. But as opposed to swinging your punch wildly at your opponent, instead you execute a punch. By executing the punch, you aren't actually putting 100% of yourself into the strike, you're actually putting more like 80% of your power behind the strike. Because if you actually hit as hard as you possibly can with a bare knuckle, there's a good chance you break your hand even if you have good form. So if I'm not hitting as hard as I possibly can, then what hope is there for me to actually do damage to my opponent? And that comes to targeting. Where you hit on your opponent's body matters every bit as much as how you hit as far as protecting yourself. If I hit someone on their forehead or on their cheek, I'm really, I have a really high likelihood of breaking my hand on their face because those parts of the body are really hard and sturdy. But if I hit the base of the jaw, which moves, I hit the base of the ear, which also moves, or I hit the orbital bone, which cracks easily, that's the targeting that I want to hit. On the head, those are the parts of the body that aren't going to hurt my hand as much when I hit. But if I don't want to hurt my hand at all, I can shoot for body shots. Hitting to, you can't see it because I'm short, <laughs> but hitting to the liver, hitting to the spleen, hitting the diaphragm and the solar plexus, these are all parts of the floating ribs. <laughs> these are all parts of the body that when you hit to, you can literally hit at as hard as you possibly want. And as long as your wrist structure is good, you really won't have any risk of damaging your hand. Finally, there's the issue of conditioning. And this is a subject that's kind of controversial as of late. Some people say you can't condition your hand. Some people say that you can. Uh, but there's no denying that your body conditions to activities. So for example, I don't know any martial artist that doesn't have a bigger neck than other people. Most martial artists tend to have a very strong neck. Now, I also don't know a lot of martial artists who go out of their way to build a strong neck. It's just the action of moving, being hit, put your neck under strain, and it conditions to the activity. If you want to condition your hands for striking, it's just a matter of striking without gloves on. That you go up to a heavy bag, 75 pounds, 100 pounds heavy bag, and you, get, you put in a few rounds bare knuckle. Now, if your skin starts to rip and tear and bleed, stop. Put on your bag gloves, finish your workout, treat the, or treat the wounds, obviously, um, and then once they're healed, you can go back at it. But you'll develop calluses over your knuckles that will allow you to hit bare knuckle, and furthermore, you will condition the hand for the impact of striking. There's all this noise about, about hitting stones or breaking wood or anything like that. A punching bag with bare knuckles will give you all the conditioning you need to actually throw your fists. It just takes time. So a quick summary of what we went over today is how do you hit without hurting your hands? First and foremost, don't throw a punch. Eye jabs, palm strikes, elbows, those are the tools that you want to use. But if you're going to use your hands, it's going to take conditioning. It's going to take proper placement, proper bone alignment, proper targeting, and also just not actually hitting as hard as you possibly can. Be a technical hitter, not a hard hitter. If you enjoy this content, please be sure to comment and subscribe and hit that bell button. You guys know the YouTube thing. 
And also, if you live in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to come train with me, all the information to get you started is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.